with this Lightroom tutorial I do want to talk about shaping light. For this reason we are going to turn this shot into this image. If you want to follow along you can find a link to download the raw file in the description of the video. And now let's jump into it. So right away let me mention this is an HDR panoramic image. But just so you know we do work with quite a bit of dynamic range here. So first up let's open up the basic tab. Looking at this program, you can see it's pretty nicely exposed. We have all the details we need. Still, it looks kind of blown out in some areas and the shadows are way too bright. That's the main thing I want to change for this image. First, let me change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape for some more base saturation. Now, how do we shape the light of this scene? What I have in mind is some deep shadows in the distance while the highlights in the foreground are less bright. So we can achieve that quite easily by bringing down the exposure, since this will fix all the things I mentioned. Let's drop it quite a bit, so we do have a little bit of room to play around with the different sliders. You can now see we have deep shadows and restore details in the highlights. However, the overall shot looks way too dark at this point, so I want to go ahead introducing some more contrast by bringing up the whites and thus mainly affecting the highlights in the foreground. I also do think the shadows are a little too dark, so I'm going to bring them up as well. And while we're at it, looking at this program, we can see just a tiny bit of underexposure going on. So what I want to do to fix that too is to just bring up the blacks. Overall, I would say it looks much, much better than before. Now, I also want to add a little bit of texture, bring down the clarity to give the image a softer look. And for the same effect, I'm going to bring down the dehaze. This will make the image brighter, so just keep that in mind. However, since we're working with a rather dark shot at the moment, bringing up the brightness slightly through negative dehaze is quite fitting for this shot. And at this point, we can also bring up the vibrance for more saturation. So that is the image after the base adjustments. Let's compare it to before real quick. You can see we have fixed the brightness. Overall, it's much, much darker than before. And we kind of lost a lot of contrast by bringing down the highlights more towards the shadows. We can quite easily fix that by doing just a bit of masking. And with the masking, we can actually really nicely target light and shadows of an image. So let me show you how to do that. Let's go ahead and open up the masking panel. The first thing that's really, really bothering me is the color of the sky. This is a way, way, way too saturated. So I'm just going to use a range mask. Here I'm choosing a color range mask and just click somewhere right there in the sky to select all the blue tones. Uh, let's maybe bring down the refine slider to really only target the sky, just like that. And I'm simply going to bring down the saturation, making the sky a little less distracting. Perfect. For the next step, I want to introduce more contrast by making the highlights in the green areas brighter. So let's create another mask. And again, we want to use a color range mask. This time, we're clicking somewhere in the bright green areas of the foreground where the light is hitting the landscape. So let's say right about here. You can see how we are nicely targeting only the highlight areas without affecting the shadows. Again, we can make use of the refine slider to tweak the selection some more, but I think this is looking quite good already. So I don't want to adjust this anymore. What can we do with this selection? As I said, I want to make this area brighter and thus just adding more contrast. So first off, let's increase the exposure very, very slightly. We can also play around with the highlights just a bit, but be very, very careful here. Or we could even increase the whites. That's looking great. But besides affecting the brightness of this area, I also want to change the color a little bit. What I mean by that is I want to increase the temperature maybe even bring down the tint. And what this will do is it will make the highlights look a lot more like it was shot during golden hour. We can also maybe bring down the saturation notch to not overdo the colors here. But I think this is looking great so far. 
Now I also want to target this river running through the foreground. Uh, let's just try another color range mask and click right in there. This is selecting quite a bit too much, but we can again tweak the mask. So let's click on those three dots, choose intersect mask width, and here choose the brush. What I want to do now is to just brush over the river. And as you can see, this will get us a really nice selection. With that river, I want to bring up the clarity, just adding more details to it. And I also want to bring down the temperature giving the river somewhat more of a blue color tone. And I'm going to bring up the saturation slightly. Perfect. At this point, I think the sky could use some tweaking as well. So let's use a simple sky selection mask. And what I want to do with the sky at the moment, it looks kind of too dark, which makes it look unnatural. I want to change that. So again, I'm just going to increase the exposure and hopefully we can fix it that way. All right, that looks quite a bit better. I can also bring up the whites just a notch. And we could also introduce some clarity just to add some structure to the clouds. But I think this looks much better. The reason for me to do that is those white bright clouds were just looking too dark and it made the whole scene look quite awkward. So by introducing some exposure to the sky, we fixed that. At this point, we did quite a bit of work on the highlights of the image, but now let's focus on the shadows. I want to target the back portion of the image. So let's use a simple linear gradient to do that job. Just like this. And since I don't want to change the sky, I'm going to say subtract and here choose select sky. We will end up with a perfect mask for the shadows in the distance. Of course, there are still some highlights involved in this area. But since we are only dropping the shadows, the highlights won't be affected at all. So, can, so we can safely bring them down and thus just add more contrast to the image. And as always, keep a close eye on the histogram to not overdo things. But this is looking really, really good. One thing that is kind of a problem is this area around the waterfall in the distance will also get darker. So I want to say subtract and let's see, I want to try the brush and let's try to just brush over the waterfall. Let's see if this looks unnatural or not. We can further adjust this by using a radial gradient, just covering the waterfall like this. And we want to target the highlights, bring them up and the whites, bring them up as well. And by doing this, we are adding some highlights back to this area, which is a little more important than the rest of the shadows in the distance. So I'm quite happy with that. Maybe we could use some clarity in here, but that's about it. And finally, there's one more mask I want to apply for the foreground. So let's use a linear gradient covering most of the foreground like this. What I want to do here is to simply erase the shadows. And I'm doing this because I want the shadows to be not as harsh in the foreground as they are in the distance. This has a benefit because it will kind of introduce some glowing soft look on the foreground. And that's it for the masking part. Let me turn off the masks so you can see the difference from before to after. And what we can clearly see here is the light situation has improved quite tremendously with deeper shadows and brighter highlights. Now let's do a little bit of color grading. And for that, we want to jump into the HSL panel. Let's start with the saturation. I do want to bring up the orange one, the yellow one, green, and the aqua tones just for the river in the foreground. Uh, let's adjust that some more. I do think I want to bring down the yellow tones just a notch. Don't want to have a toxic wasteland in the foreground right here, but I think that's a rather good spot right here. All right, and it's really not intuitive, but we can actually tweak the contrast or the light saturation of this image some more using the luminance function of the HSL panel. So luminance just controls the brightness of a color. As an example, let's say we want to make the highlights in the foreground brighter. Those consist mostly of green and yellow tones. So if we want to target them, 
we can simply raise the yellow luminance. And again, we are only really affecting those bright highlights of the foreground. So this again is really helpful for the purpose of shaping light. So let's see, I don't want to overdo it since this will quickly introduce overexposure, but I think somewhere around here looks quite nice. I'm also going to bring up the green luminance just a bit and maybe even the blue luminance for the sky. Perfect. And at this point, there's not much left to do. We could apply a little bit of split toning in the color grading tab. Yeah, just want to target the midtones. Let's introduce a cold color tone in here. Slightly raise the saturation around here. And then we could apply a bit of sharpening in the details tab. So drop the radius, increase the details, add masking, and introduce more amount of sharpening. And that's it for improving the light of this landscape scene. So I hope this tutorial was helpful and interesting. As always, if you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.